bison rope. So why is this thing important? Why? This rope here, at one time, belonged to a very central uh, figure in American history. This robe was worn by Cynthia Ann Parker. You can see some of the intricate work. I mean, look right there. See the colors? See the work done with it? The extensive work? This was worn by Cynthia Ann when she was recaptured by the whites in uh, Oklahoma, I believe it was, if I remember my history right. See the symmetry? You remember this on the other side? I know y'all are probably wondering why I am showing y'all this. Well, I'm here with my friend Tanya, who does not want to be on camera, but uh, her family is connected with the Parkers. How? Well, we'll kind of get into that in just a little bit. But, I mean, look at this. See all the corners? You see the artistry that went into it. And if you look in the middle, let's see if I can get a better angle from this side. There's a sun there in the middle. And the have rays that come out each side there. I mean, think about the work that went into a piece like this. See, here's a map of Texas. You know, the uh, Comanche people, they, uh, they went through all of this area. In fact, Cynthia Ann was taken somewhere right about in here. You know, but they roamed this whole entire area. This is Cynthia Ann's son, Juana Parker. He became very intricate also in the history of the American West. If it wasn't for him, we probably wouldn't have some of the stuff we do now. Because he did a lot towards uh, cattle business back in the day. And a little bit about Cynthia Ann there, if y'all want to pause it. And there's the lady herself. Taken when she was nine years old, lived with the Comanche up into her 30s, I believe it is. Look at this. Yeah, the pictures change. It's a light board there, and it uh, shows the different pictures throughout time. But she was very important. And I'll get into later about how this woman and her family intersected with my friend Tanya and her family. Howdy, y'all. Welcome back to Ireland Bound. As you can see from the video, this one is a little bit different. This involves my friend Tanya's family, actually. Uh, she and I are longtime great friends. And in fact, she was either my second or third subscriber to my channel. I'm not exactly sure which because her daughter holds the other title. One of them was second and one of them was third. So they both, you know, joined my, my channel right away. So they... Uh, this is for both of them. Uh, this involves Tanya's great-great-grandfather. He was a man known as Coho Smith. Uh, it was a nickname. I uh, Right now, for the life of me, I can't remember what the Coho meant. But it, uh, it was the name that he had had for years and years and years. So, uh, Coho, he had himself like Cynthia and been taken by Indians he lived with them for quite a while and he learned their language and so Cynthia Ann's cousin William he heard about this and he sent off a letter to Coho for Coho to come see him now William and his family lived in a town called Birdville Texas which is somewhere north and east of Fort Worth. And uh, so he uh, he lived up there. He sent off asking Coho to come and to visit him because, like I said, they wanted someone that could talk to Cynthia Ann. So uh, he did. He, he got up there. Um, let's see. I'm going to pick up here partway through. 
says he had a shop and was at work making fine combs of horn. They were worth a dollar apiece, he said, on account of war times. Um, a dollar apiece for combs that, I mean, even nowadays, a lot of combs, you know, are only like two or three dollars. So that's, that's a pretty expensive comb. Presently, his wife came to the shop and said, William, dinner is ready. He introduced me. She said she was glad I had come, for now she could talk with Cynthia Ann. Mr. Parker asked her where Cynthia Ann was. She said, I saw her go out at the gate about half an hour ago. Parker said, let's go and hunt her up, saying she generally is moping around out here in these woods. We had went about a hundred yards when I saw a little smoke. It was at a place where a large tree had been cut down to make clapboards, and the hearts of the board timber were laying there. She was sitting on a bunch of the hearts with her elbows on her knees and her hands to her face. An old sunbonnet hid her face. A little child was sitting on the ground making a little corral with small sticks and talking to itself in uh, Comanche, all the language that the child knew. A little fire was burning near. Parker said, Cynthia Ann, dinner, pointing towards the house and then cramming his hand, hand in his mouth. His style of sign language. She raised up and looked at me, her eyes flashing, uh, evidently offended. She took up the child and we all started to the house. Mr. Parker said that so many people came there to see her that it annoyed her, saying this is why she looks so spitefully at you. Parker was before myself and next and Cynthia Ann behind me. We had proceeded about 20 steps when she suddenly sprang to me and caught my left hand and looked at my wrist. She had discovered a white scar around my wrist and supposed it had been done with the bowstring. The scar had been made by strips of bear grass or soap plant when I was captured by the Comanches a good many years before, when they had tied me to the ground for several nights. Persons that uh, shoot a very strong bow cut the wrist with the bowstring so most Indians have the scar unless they wear a wristlet or rawhide of leather. She jabbered something to me in Comanche but spoke so fast that I did not understand her. But she used the word how wheat. Then I began to catch her meaning. She wanted to know if I had lived with the Indians I laughed and shook my head. She dropped her hand and said no more. When she got to the house, she sat down at the dinner. Cynthia Ann sat opposite to me, and I noticed her looking at me and not eating. Mrs. Parker said, Well, Mr. Smith, I have not heard you talk to our cousin any yet. Uh, I hope you are not... Uh, sorry, trying to turn a page here says, I hope you are not like numbers of people uh, that have been here professing to speak Spanish, and after two or three words, they were done. I told her I would talk all they wanted, so I said to Cynthia Ann the first Comanche word that occurred to me, e wu ni kim Now, anyone who might know Comanche, if I just butchered that, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm reading someone else's writing. <laughs> um, it says she sprang up with a scream and knocked about half the dishes off the table, scaring Mr. Parker. But she ran around to me and fell on the floor and caught me around both ankles, crying in Comanche, Ima mi moerno, Ima mi moerno. And then in Spanish, I'm knowing not that was the mark of the bowstring. And she's so excited, I really thought she would go into a fit. After a while, Mr. Parker got the table and dishes 
to write, and they pl uh, placed a chair for Cynthia Ann beside mine, and we managed to eat. But Cynthia Ann held me by one arm, and talking all the time to me in Comanche and Spanish, mixing the two languages all the time. She would not eat, and every now and then would say, Oh, don't eat, let us talk. Oh, my friend, uh, don't let us uh, don't let us we need to talk she said to me in spanish i wanted to go back to my two boys uh and billy there has told me my signs that uh he wants to go to my people also uh, P uh i said billy did you want to go to the comanches yes i do and that is why i sent for you to interpret for it is this way. I was for the Union, but I could not get ready to move soon enough on account of my wife's sickness. I was going to Illinois. Well, I had to go into the Confederate Army. I had no choice. Well, in that short time, I was shot in the uh, thigh by a mini ball, and it shattered the bone. I was sent home, discharged, but my thigh is not well yet and as you see i am crippled for life i had noticed that he had walked lame it says now these dad blasted hill flies and uh, he's talking about constri uh, constricted uh, off officers uh says they're after me again trying to force me into the army again but i will never fight against the union Never again. Now I want you to take me and Cynthia Ann to the Comanches. I can stay with them until the cruel war is over. My wife is uh, well fixed with everything, and she wants me to go to the Comanches rather than be forced into the Confederate Army. Again. Cynthia Ann put her hand over her mouth and said, Se han hablado Con me, primo, bastante. So I told her in Spanish all that Billy had said. She said, you will take us, won't you? I told her that the legislator had granted her a league of land, and if I was to take her and Billy to the Indians, that I would never dare come back to Texas anymore. It says, I, uh, you have no horse, and this pony of mine is not fit for such a long journey about the headwaters of the Arkansas River. Horses? That is nothing, she said. There is some first-rate uh, horses running here. Uh, they are here uh, every day licking salt out there by the gate, and wherever I get my hands on Maine, uh, they are mine. Don't hesitate a moment about horses. Oh, I tell you, mi corazón están llorado todo el tiempo por mis dos hijos. Then she uh, would say in Comanche, en se ca soc ne Sua. And then in Spanish, no mas lleva me. I told her that I uh, had just married a young wife. That is nothing, she said. Only take me to my people and they will give you as many wives as you want. <laughs> the Indians were very polygamous. In fact, uh, Cynthia Ann's son, uh, by the time he died, he had gained seven wives <laughs> so they they uh they don't have a problem with marrying a lot of women uh says our people are not like the white men says make sure i got the 71 okay says uh they take as many wives as they wish uh why cannot you and billy go i asked oh billy don't know anything about indians we might start, and when we got uh, way up in the Indian country, uh, he might 
be staking a horse or getting wood and would be killed and I would be made a slave and I would never get to see my boys nor my people. Never, never, never. And I know Billy would not know the route nor if in what direction to travel. I asked her if she thought she could find the Comanches. I hardly know if I could. I would go from right here up to Prairie Dog River where I was captured. Then I would try to find the old Indian trail we came down to Texas on. I would go from Prairie Dog River to the headwaters of the Canadian and from there strike to the Cimarron and then on up into the Arkansas. But I would not go alone. I would not uh, hunt game and uh, uh, like a man to support myself and child. You must go. Don't say no. See now, I will give you parlin pa e et parlin te he ye parlin esposas because she added my people will be uh, so glad if you could bring me to them they will give you anything I would ask of them so as you can see he didn't just have one or two words he actually had a pretty lengthy conversation he actually talked to her for a couple of days. Uh, he stayed there more than just, you know, one one day. I mean, he stayed there a couple of days. And the whole time, Cynthia Ann wanted to go home. Now, I got a question. How many of us can say we have that kind of connection? This book right here, Coho Graphs. Hold on a second. Let me take off the, uh, oh, no, can't do that. It's all on there in plastic. Can't uh, can't take it off where you can see it better. But uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. I think I got that. Coho graphs. Uh, that was written by my friend Tanya's great great grandfather, Coho Smith. Uh, also, too, he did some of his own illustrations in it. For instance, you know the scene that was described about when he first met Cynthia Ann. See right there? He drew the picture. Yeah, it, pretty good illustrator, too. I mean, that, that's some good detail and uh, good likenesses and stuff. I mean, how many of us everyday people can do that? And he wasn't, like, well-educated. He didn't go to, like, all the great schools. He didn't have professional art teaching or anything like that. But he managed to do a pretty good picture there of what he saw. Um, I know Tanya told me that when he wrote this book, uh, he, uh, her grandfather, who actually knew him and got to talk to him, said that he would sit there with a magnifying glass and with a pen and would sit there and write out this whole entire book that he did. I mean, th this is a, a pretty good thick book here. I mean, that's like about an inch or so. You know, so, I mean, that's a, a pretty thick book, you know, and he wrote all that out and he did all these drawings and talked about his life and the things that he did. You know, meeting Cynthia Ann, that was just one part of it. You know, the, getting to, to spend time with her, that was just a part of his life. But it was something he, he did and he passed on this story and, uh, like I said, this is one of Tanya's books that she had. She's got one for each of her kids, and she also managed to find copies that she gave to her brother and sister so that they could have copies of it, too. You know, the book that he wrote, it was so accurate that this man here, he used part of the excerpts, especially the meeting there. Uh, he used the ex excerpts from what I just read and he put it into his book and, you know I mean the fact that it's used as source material for someone else's work you know I mean that's that's pretty good you know and this like I said this was a friend of mine's great great grandfather you know uh, there are other people who I might meet that they could have a, a bigger 
better story than I do. A bigger, better story than Tanya does. But you know what? It's pretty cool, the fact that we get to see, even today, a buffalo robe that had been worn in 1862 by this woman, Cynthia Ann, when she had been captured. That she was... You know, it, it goes back that far because, I mean, that's over 150 years. Yeah, it's, if you saw in the pictures there in the video, there are holes in it now. It's getting a bit worn, you know, it's it's wearing out. But, I mean, like I said, it's over 150 years old, so what more can you expect? But anyways, this, uh, I hope that y'all realize that, you know, we all have histories. Sometimes some people get to publish a book and talk about their life. Sometimes people, you know, they might go around doing everybody else's life. But there are all sorts of things that we can find out about our family, about our histories, things that we can can learn from. You know, like I said, it's uh, <laughs> I was trying to read Indian words there. Like I said, I probably butchered them. If anyone speaks Comanche, I apologize for anything that was missaid or if I mispronounced a few words because, like I said, I was trying to read someone else's writing. But anyways, uh, I hope that y'all got something out of this. If y'all haven't already, remember to subscribe down there, nice big red button, so you can keep getting more stories because, like I said, most of them have been my stories so far. But I figured, you know, y'all might enjoy something a little bit different for a change. You know, also, too, don't forget when the you hit the subscribe button, there's going to be three little bell icons that come up. Hit the top one that says all to make sure that you get every single thing. Actually, I have noticed on some of the new ones that it, it will give you all of them unless you go through and tell it to do differently. So uh, if you got the old system, hit the all. If you got the new system, don't worry about it because the all's already been hit for you. So, uh, anyways, like I said, subscribe. Also, too, you know, got that thumbs up button. You know, you know, let me know that you like the story, and uh, we can do other stories and find other interesting things to to uh, discuss. And also, too, leave a comment. You know, maybe uh, you had a connection with someone famous somewhere in your family. Or maybe you yourself do. You know, let me know. You know, I have, I'd be interested to read some of them to find out, you know, how people are connected. You know, uh, did you know someone famous now or someone famous from like 10, 15, 20 years ago? But anyways, uh, I hope y'all have a great weekend and I will talk to y'all later.